Welcome to this edition of Las Peliculas Sabados Gigantes at the Cinema Marijuana Theater. Yeah! Woo! Yeah. All right! Coming, coming at you once again with the hard hitting uh, stuff. The hard hitting, extra this, chewy the, action. Extra chewy, the hard hitting, <laughs> extra, extra crunchiness. Because also it, pumpkin any. It is it is pumpkin any, and it's more than just chewy. It's crunch chewy, mm-hmm. because it's it's like nuts and gum. It is together at last. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, for the first time. It's I've like been a chunky that's been left out in the sun, then yeah. in the fridge, then you eat it, and then it's dipped like, in gum. Yes, yeah, like delicious. Uh, yes, so uh, that is us. Uh, we are a group that watches a movie every week that we don't know what it is. And we're in the middle of a theme now. You blew it, Oscar, where we're watching all films that were nominated for Best Picture Oscars but did not win. So, tonight, <clears throat> uh, tonight's winner was Matt. Woohoo! Congrats. Uh, 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 but <laughs> yeah, first, let, let's, get in, let's get introductions out of the way. So, uh, we'll go clockwise, starting with me. I'm Ed. I'm John. I'm Kenzie. I'm Zeb. And I'm Matt. Okay. And, um, yes. So He's Matt. <laughs> he <laughs> is Matt. Matt, and he is tonight's winner. Uh, and he selected the film L.A. Confidential from 1997. Mm-hmm. Yes. So, uh, before we start talking about the film, Kenzie, why don't you read us the IMDb synopsis of the film? So people know what this is about in case they don't already. Okay. So it's about these no, no, no. three hot no, no. cops. <laughs> 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 well, that's basically no, what that's the not, you're such, IMDb page You're such a liar. Says. That was the original title, actually, was Three, three Hot Cops. Three Hot Cops. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They, they, went with, they had to change One it. One a penny, two Curtis a penny. Hansen went, that's not going to fit on a billboard. <laughs> One a penny, two a penny, three, <laughs> three hot, hot cops. cops. <laughs> I can can play three hot cops on the recorder. (laughs) All right. So, Kenzie, give it to us. Fine. Give it to us as only you can. Okay. 1950s LA is the speedy, seedy backdrop for this intricate, noirish tale (laughs) of police corruption and Hollywood sleaze. Three very hot cops are all after the truth, <laughs> each in their own style. Ed Exley, the golden boy of the police force, he's the one with dark hair and blue eyes, so he's pretty good looking. Um, he's specky. Yeah, he'll do anything to get ahead except sell out. Bud White, he's also hot. He's like, <laughs> he's like kind of the scruffy bad boy one of all of them. And um, he's ready to break the rules to seek justice, but barely able to keep his raging violence under control. And Jack Vincennes, always looking for a celebrity. Oh, that's Kevin Spacey. Totally hot also. (laughs) A quick, always looking for a celebrity and a quick buck until his conscience drives him to join Exley and White down the one-way path to find the truth behind the dark world of L.A. crime. Because they all love that whore for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> top top okay. notch whore. Whoa, slut shaming. All right, let's get started. She, <laughs> let's get, let's she <laughs> was a whore. <laughs> she was literally she a, was, whore. Yeah, literally oh. a whore. whore. Sex worker, shaming. please. She was such a whore. Yeah, ho, Kim Bassinger. Such she was a such a whore. whore. <laughs> all right. So Matt uh, won and selected this film. Yeah, uh, that you now know what it's about. And mm-hmm. just to give you some context, uh, this film was nominated for Best Picture in 1997, alongside uh, Goodwill Hunting, The Full Monty, As Good as It Gets, and the winner that year, Titanic. Mm. Ah. Pa- apparently, as good as it gets wasn't oh. quite as good as it gets. Titanic. <laughs> And Titanic was prefer. supposedly better than as good as it gets. Which it made is, it made oh, the most money. It certainly made a lot of money. <laughs> so that proved to the Academy how good it was. Exactly, because that's what it's all about. That is a really good. So uh, actually, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this is uh, pretty, <laughs> this is a pretty good uh, year really for these because uh, there are those who would. Uh, I mean, as good as it gets, as I recall, was was pretty hotly received. Uh, people dug it. Was, it. Yeah, Jack it Nicholson was. and the dog. Yeah. James yeah, and L. Helen Brooks. Hunt. Helen yeah. Hunt. Yeah, James L. Brooks. He, uh, for, uh, he did broadcast news too, right? Yeah. Yeah, and really. The Simpsons. And Simpsons. Yeah, yeah. A really sharp Those writer. Terms of really, endearment. Yeah, uh, re- just a really, really bl- brilliant writer. Um, so that was uh, that. That was up. Uh, and then uh, G- 
Goodwill Hunting, I know people flipped out uh, they over did. that. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I mean, possibly rightfully so. I know didn't. Yeah, Robin uh, Williams was uh, was really really good. In that. Yeah, showing you know some of that depth that he was so tremendously capable. It's another of. iconic role of his, the, yeah. t- the teacher, the mentor role that yeah, he's you he know just fucking so well known for. Blew it up, man. And, Which, uh, uh, did he get uh, a ba- best uh, supporting? In yes, that? he did. Yeah. Did he get the award? He got the award. Okay, cool. Yeah, and nice. I know Affleck and uh, Damon got, got the screenplay, yeah, original, for, yeah. best original screenplay. Uh, and then the Full Monty was pretty popular as well. Uh, Which I, I haven't up. seen. I, I have not it, seen it either. It doesn't hold up. No. Really? Okay. It's a, it's, it, it was one of those movies that everybody goes shit over, and then it doesn't hold up over time. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was popular for its time, but over time, it's diminished. It's yeah. It, it's yeah. Totally. It's funny too. If you look back at like past Oscars, you'll see those movies. They're like, oh wow, like that got nominated, because it doesn't. It doesn't stand the test of time. Like, no, it doesn't. Like no, to you, now, you, like I remember that being a big deal. But to me, the fact the full Monty best picture of the year, like really, like that happened. That's crazy. And you now. look at what else yeah, was released, it, like Boogie Nights. Not nominated. Oh my god, yeah, I know. And Boogie Nights is is, is just fucking amazing. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, oh, that's a because crime. because no no Burt Reynolds was n- at least nominated. He was for up best against supporting. Robin Williams uh, for right. was supporting. Was he yeah. okay? Jackie Brown came out that year. Oh. Uh, Tarantino's yeah, arguably that best win. Wow. Oscar, you uh, nice. Jack, God, Jackie Wag Brown the dog, awesome the sweet film. hereafter. You see, there's no reason the full see, Monty should be in there. No, and like, the, oh jeez, this just proves like. You how, blew how, it, Oscar. You blew it. Well, you blew it. Blew it on so many levels. Yeah. Like not just on the winner, but like just completely leaving out like awesome, awesome movies. Yeah, and they could have had more nominees that had wanted to. Jim yeah. Cameron, if you're listening, I'm a huge fan of Titanic and would like a job. <laughs> <laughs> I will defend that amazing masterpiece of an epic adventure <laughs> film to the grave you for a that. job. You do that. <laughs> that movie holds up, though. Everyone no, it doesn't. That movie. I, I actually for girls, maybe. You know the the one thing the one thing that I actually really did dig about Titanic was that it had uh, was that it had um, Eric Braden in it in a very small role, who I'm sure none of you will know as. Victor Newman from television. Oh, yeah. Eric Braden. Oh, the Young of the Restless. Yeah. Oh, the Restless. That Eric Braden. Yeah, yeah, he played. Yes, he plays Victor Newman on the Young and the Restless, which I was uh, hooked on for many years. I'm, this, uh, this I'm, is some I'm, dark stuff you're revealing. I, now. I know. <laughs> I'm. 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 I'm cured you're, of it now. Ed, you're making news right now. I'm, you know I'm, I'm cured of it now. <laughs> I'm, but I'm looking over at the bookshelf and I see uh, cooking with the young and restless cookbook. It was. It was. A, it was. A, <laughs> it was. are falling into place now, aren't they? Yeah. yeah was, I'm like, it, was, it makes so much sense. <laughs> it was something. Something that I shared with actually a series of loved ones at a specific certain uh, few section of years in life. Um, I'm Don't neither, look at me. I'm, I'm, neither, I'm, neither, I'm, <laughs> not, not I'm neither proud nor ashamed of it, but I can tell you that it's over and it's behind me now. Anyways, All right, moving that on. was that was. <laughs> I just want to say that was really sweet. That when I watched Titanic, I'm like, yeah, I was like, fucking Victor that Newman. Eric I was Braden. Like, yes, <laughs> he's super. He's like that super posh like German guy. <laughs> That's in it for like two seconds. Well, and anyway, I'm sure your, everybody remembers your love for Victor anyway, Newman yeah. aside. <laughs> uh, so uh, I guess the question would be, Matt, uh, poor K, this movie. <laughs> I thought you said uh, parquet. <laughs> butter, butter. Parkour. <laughs> parkour. So parquet. Did you oh, you know, they open a parkour gym in town, right? When you go there and pay, it's just a door that leads outside. <laughs> 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 That's funny. Uh, <laughs> all right. Go see District B13 if you don't know what parkour is. So, why did you pick anyways, this? Anyways, uh, yes. Matt. Um, oh, geez. It's tough picking a movie for this theme because it. Oh, I know it's well. It's, well, it's, 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 it's not tough picking. It's tough narrowing it down to like the one you like you. To, to finally get to that point where you like are over the others it, enough that you can settle on one. Yeah, true. And and there were many other movies that, that I was considering. Actually, one of which, like uh, the first one that popped in my head uh, when we when you announced the theme was actually uh, The Line of Winter. Oh, and, nice. Um, it's kind of Which funny because well, of Beckett. Yeah, because you you picked Beckett, <laughs> yeah. and it's it's another it's another uh, Henry the Second. Yeah, well, well, but that movie. makes it an interesting choice because then because you did kind of in a way that have an opportunity to kind of almost have like a little a, a little micro like a little a little microcosmic underglass within this cinema underglass. 
yeah, in this sort of true. examination of both Peter O'Toole as this character and From two different directions. And, yeah, and, and this character writers. sort of as portrayed in, in film, uh, which which might have been an interesting pick, but but also a, a laudable decision. Uh, I mean, e- either way would have been great to, to go with what you go- went with or to go with that. I could see how that would be a tough decision. Um, yeah, it was. And actually, after watching Beckett, which I really think is a superior movie. Uh, I agree. <laughs> I, I like Beckett more. The Lion in Winter is just a little too slow for me. Mm-hmm. Or, I mean, uh, comparing the two and O'Toole isn't as screen scene chewing. He's a little mm-hmm. bit. He's a, he's 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 marginally more reserved. And I think he's so more. Slightly over, more. Slightly slightly slightly. I think he's more over the top in uh, in Beckett. Yeah, I think that's true. But there, uh, in uh, <laughs> the in the line that went there, I think there's a lot of a lot of actors uh, that are chewing the scene. Yeah, that's true. And actresses. Yes. I mean, yeah, got a nipper. Yes. Anyways, yeah. So uh, yeah, uh, yeah, you definitely have a stronger female presence in yeah. Line of Winter as well. Yeah, for sure. But for for this pick, uh, I did go with this one ultimately. Um, I think um, I was kind of thinking of this one uh, for the theme before this one for uh, the 1930s theme because it is uh, isn't, isn't it, it? Set, it's set in the early 50s though yeah, isn't I think it? it's really because post war there's TV so yes. post World right. War II I was actually trying to figure out specifically what year or at least and I mean I was thinking probably either super late 40s or super yeah, early 50s. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're right. I am just go, say. Go, uh, I haven't checked just going by the 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 cars and mm-hmm. the fact there's TV. Mm-hmm. True. Um, Everything just says 50s. Uh, the the script probably specifies, but I would imagine we're talking very early 50s. Yeah, I would think. Okay, fair enough. I mean, but, the, there's uh, just the sort of the, the music that's floating about. Yeah, it doesn't say late. Well, and even even on some level too, like the clothing, yeah. you know what I'm saying? It's, it's like it's... they're fresh out of the 40s, right? Right. And Dragnet came out in 51. Okay, yeah, which so, was Badge that of that Honor, that, which right? That, uh, that show right. was obviously supposed right. to be a Dragnet parable. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So. Well, anyways, it's a it's a really good um, <laughs> kind of neo noir movie that um, well, I guess maybe some of the stuff that that was being shown in uh, in the 30s um, a theme. Kind of reminded me of this one, yeah. yeah. Well, it's, because it's, definitely sure. like um, um, Chinatown, yeah. That really kind of uh, sparked my uh, uh, my memory of this one. It's always interesting to get uh, like organized crime stories set in California, yeah. Because that's such a New York <laughs> East Coast thing, right? And yeah. there's not many, but it, it's and it's funny that like, it's like Godfather Two in Cuba, right? Right? Like that, the, <laughs> you know, there obviously there was organized crime in California, so it's sort of almost like a, a spin on the genre. The fact that it isn't set back east in the 30s or something, mm-hmm. that it's out here in the 50s, but it's still like really an organized crime, cops and robbers type of thing. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And I just really love the movie. I mean, the the, the characters are are great, well acted, uh, very very well defined. I think. It's like you like the the way they're they're the character development yeah. is really strong in this movie and um I mean the the plot itself just the complexity of it it's like it well well okay it, hang on hold hold oh, like we're getting off track cuz cuz you can shower all the praise on it when we get to you to talk about it. You're cutting me off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, bringing the music up. I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to restructure while we're while we're while we're moving here. Okay. All <laughs> to right. Get it. Cause, we'll get back well, to it. Well, because yeah, because that's what we'll talk about. I mean, when we go around to see what you think, you know what I mean. Obviously. All right. Um, All right. But uh, but uh, I, I guess more, more. I guess more. More. More to the point. What made you select it over the other couple that you were thinking of, like Lion mm. and Winter. You know what? I don't. I don't know. I think I just kind of ruled out just a gut reaction. Lion, Lion and Winter, just because I didn't want to double up on the back thing. That. Yeah, gotcha. Okay, all right. Uh, let's see. So there's a couple of things we can talk about uh, about this, but first we'll just go around and talk about what we thought about the film. Yeah, yeah. Can sure. give our rating. All right. Clockwise, starting with you, John. Uh, well, I loved it. I thought it was really good. Uh, I've seen it most of it before. I think um, I think Ed and I watched. He was watching. I came home from work or something, so I caught like uh, probably seventy five percent of it. And uh, it's yeah, it's it's really well done. There's obviously some top notch talent in there. Um, you know, with a movie like this that has such a detailed uh, kind of um, intricate sort of plot, gotta pay attention to this one. Y- you do, um, and it helps that 
you know, partially because they're all so famous, you know who they are. Right. But also, like, like some of the movies like this, the characters will be really generic. And you'll be able to tell, like, wait, wait, wait no, who's that guy? And, if you're and not didn't, paying attention right, to their shoot names that guy? real close. Right, right. Like, it's like, yeah. a, wait a minute. Like, uh, there's a bunch of white guys in suits and hats. Yeah. And it's like, oh, wait a minute. But everybody here was designed, the characters, the costumes, the personalities, the names, the hairstyles. Everything was enough that everybody stood out. Um, yeah, you really can't say enough about how much talent was in there. I'm not surprised at all to be nominated for an Oscar. Um I think that, uh, man, I'm just trying to think of what else to say. It's just a really, really good movie. Um, yeah, four stars. I would say four stars out cool. of five. Okay. Uh, cool. yeah. All right. Really good. Kenzie, wild card Kenzie, take it away. I really like this movie. <gasps> All right. <laughs> <laughs> why, why wouldn't I like it? I mean, it's... You never it's, know. It's just, just never a really know you, Kenzie. entertaining movie. Awesome. Uh, I already stressed that all the men were good looking. Okay. All the characters <laughs> were good looking. Okay, okay, no, 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 but I gotta know. This is what I want to know. Rank them. Ooh. Okay. Including Jamie Cromwell, the three cops. <laughs> Exley. <laughs> ex, 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 the three cops. You know Exley, Cromwell's on the bottom. Exley, I don't know, man. Who's I don't Cromwell? know the the guy. Uh, the, the, guy the guy from Captain Babe. Dudley, Dudley, oh, the, Dudley the okay. main bad guy. Yeah. At the end, spoiler Whoa. alert. <laughs> yeah, don't listen to this if yeah. you haven't seen it. I guess. <laughs> well, uh, it's kind of tripping a lot of our reviews. I guess. We should, maybe yeah. we should put like spoiler warnings right at the beginning. Like, there's going to be like that. There'd be spoilers here. Yeah, because we do. I mean, <laughs> if we're going to talk about the movie freely yeah, here, we, we have to. We can't, we yes. can't be worried about so it. So from now on, yes, R. There'd be spoilers ahead. Okay. Uh, <laughs> well, you know and what? Booty. When I get the Ooh. mixer, we should get some drops going with the sampler, and actually we could have that. Yeah. That'd be great. That'd be awesome. Why are you looking at me? I can't. Because I'm looking at us producing them together in the studio. All right. <laughs> Let's do it. Uh, uh, okay. So, yeah. Spacey. Uh, 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 Crow and Exley, the Exley guy, whoever the hell that was. <laughs> guy sure. Pierce? That's it. Guy Thank Pierce. you. What else? What do I know him from? Uh, uh, Memento. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. And him. And then Jamie Cromwell. Go. Uh, he's at the bottom. Okay. Jesus. All right. Well, dude, <laughs> he's, he's old. He's super old school and, and Irish. He's and he's uh, taking care of fucking business. He's like snuffing fools out and shit. If I were much older, then maybe, but not right now. Not okay. He was the yeah. farmer and babe. You Does don't that help have, at all. You, uh, <laughs> you don't have like a kind of a one of those uh, May December fetishes. No. All right. So then, rank the three cops. Then who okay. was the hottest, and then or, or the least hottest of well, the three? Even uh, they were all hot, but ho- just put hottest them in order. to nottest. <laughs> just yeah. put them in order. <laughs> yeah. Well, in real life is Kevin Spacey, hands down. But as far as the characters go, no, 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 no. Just okay, yeah. Just physical attractiveness. Kevin Spacey. Yeah. Okay, and then. He's a suave motherfucker. And then, <laughs> and then who? And then Russell Crowe in that movie though, because I don't like him as much now, but I thought he was pretty hot in the movie. Well, I mean, we are talking almost twenty years ago. Yeah. Uh, and he uh, does uh, put on quite a display of uh, raw brutality. He does. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. Fuck Mary Kill the characters. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, the three cops. Okay. Not them in real life. Probably marry the the good cop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you had to the marry Guy cop. Pierce. That the would one be, with, yeah. yeah. That'd be the only, yeah, you had to marry him. I don't <laughs> know how good he was, but he just, yeah, that's pretty obvious. Fuck Russell Crowe and probably kill <laughs> Kevin Spacey. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be fair, I think Kevin Spacey would be the one who would be the most self-absorbed. He oh, yeah. was stupid, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you okay. couldn't marry him because you know he'd cheat on you. Okay, yeah. all right, all right. So sorry to derail you. Go ahead, keep telling us about L.A. Confidential. Um, I just really liked it. I thought it was good. All right, yeah. what are you going to uh, rank it? Uh, okay, normally I would want to give it a five stars because I was... I was entertained the whole nice. movie. There was nothing I didn't like about it. It was a little long, but it was It's a little bad. over two hours, I think. Uh, let me see. I got the run timer. I keep talking on flow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I, I didn't see it going the way it did. Two hours, 18 minutes. I guess he already spoiled it, but I didn't <laughs> see that ending coming, so. Good. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it was good. I liked it. Um, so, yeah, normally five stars. 
But then everyone's like, oh, well, you have to save the five stars to when it really deserves a no. five no, no, star. No, no, you do what no. you want. That's, that's kind of just me. You define your five star rating. <laughs> you well, do you. Well, my five stars is similar to Jason's, where it's on an entertainment. So, so, yeah. five, yeah. that's, that's so it's five stars on my energy. All right. Yes. Scale. Excellent. Jason. Fantastic. Jason oh, yeah. We're down another one. Oh, oh, yeah, he died. He oh, I just, I just oh, call him Land. Land. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't even know his first name. <laughs> Well, that's we cold, Zeb. We, we figure that in cold death, as ice. In death, it's okay for us to tell you now. Yeah. We R. figure R. you should Chris, know. R. P. His name Jason. was Jason Land. Oh, oh His only name was Jason, Jason Land. Land. Well, because there used His to be two Jasons, Jason so that's what we got used to calling him Jason Land because okay. of the, the land part. I just call him Land. I'm yeah. like, who the hell is Land. Jason? Well, and Condi, you know. Yeah, David. It's cool yeah. referring to people by their last yeah. names. Yeah. That's neat. That's, yeah, that is neat. All right, Zeb. Yes. You're up. L.A. Confidential, yeah, perfect companion piece to Chinatown, I believe. Yeah, and definitely. I'll tell you why. Because I love me a good crime story. I love me a good film noir. Yes, absolutely. Chinatown and L.A. Confidential are perfect examples of how to do a California-based film noir. Yeah, which is very interesting because both of them were made in different eras, but set in the same era, uh, that, close to the same era. Yeah, that, that, that's a good point that you make because. Typically, a lot of film noir is set, you know, kind of in the big city. And L.A. is a big city, but it's not like a New big York city like other big cities. It's totally yeah. different right, vibe. Right, You've got beaches and palm trees, you know. And I, I would even put The Long Goodbye along with... The one with Elliot Gould? Yeah. Man, I got to see that. With, with Chinatown and L.A. Confidential. Because I'm watching is this... Is that se- funny? Is that a comedy or is it is it totally straight? It's it's half and half. Okay, okay. Uh, because I'm watching this season's version of True Detective season two, and it's a film noir set in California, having to do with a body found on the highway. And I can't fucking follow it to save my life. Oh, I can't yeah. even tell you the fucking. <laughs> I can tell you the plot of the first season <laughs> right. because it's very well done. <laughs> probably the best TV I've ever watched since Breaking Bad. This season's shit. <laughs> really, and I'm very angry. Not shape it up. They, well, they were because they have a great cast. <laughs> wow, fucking Rick Brilliant. Springfield I have as no a idea creepy what's plastic surgeon. Really? Yeah, that seems like an irreverent, right? Kind of but irreverent the, casting choice that but I, the I TV just go series for. Is shit because you can't follow along. I'm like a this, fucking... and I'm getting to my point here. This past episode, the first half had to deal with a character called Stan. I don't know who the fuck Stan is. <laughs> and when I went back and watched previous episodes, oh, he's only in it for two very brief scenes and one very quick shot of his dead body. And they devoted half an episode to this guy and what he had. Fucking it's like, Stan. fuck you. Why? God damn it. It's hard enough to follow. Yeah, a, a show shouldn't be forcing you to take notes while you watch it. Yeah, that's, LA that's Confidential. <laughs> that's, that's a primer. Primer was <laughs> yeah. like that. Perfect. Yeah, in every way because you could follow the fucking plot. Right. Yeah. It's a really yeah. good job. No, it. really, really, it, it's like because I think that that maybe for some writers, if you're trying to write kind of a mystery like that, I, I wonder if the tendency m- might be to kind of try to overdo it because you do want to throw everybody off the trail and have a huge sort of revelatory thing at the end. Well, and, but they and also I think maybe do. it might be. They did a great they, well, job. That, that's what I'm saying. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah, they, being they do. They do that. But I, I, that's what I'm saying. I wonder, like, if writers fall into the trap of, of making it more convoluted. Over over complicated, be. right? Because like that would be the, the natural inclination, I would think. You know, to like, mm-hmm. well, I've seen all these and love them. I need to ratchet it up a notch, right? So you'd want to go over, but no, you really could follow it. Uh, the like the whole time, you, you know, even for like a dummy like me, I, you know, I was on board. Yeah, I was like, so, I could follow clearly what's happening, yeah. how the prostitution ring tied in with everybody. And I remember seeing this for the very first time um, back when it was released. That was the last time I watched it. Oh, nice. And so I'm. Um, this aged, is like the first time well. I watched it in yeah, almost 20 know, years. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, because it was 97. So thank you, Matt. Yeah. Um, but I, it was just amazing that the film still holds up. Yeah. Uh, and that's what I really like about this theme is you blew it, Oscar. You look at some of the winners that won that year, they don't hold up. Right. Um, example, right. The, the Full Monty does not hold up over time. Yeah. That was a movie right. that was released during you know the Full Monty experience. Yeah, it was it's, a big it's, deal. It's, it's kind of like Minions now. Minions will not right. hold up the test of time yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, at it's all. A, it's a fad. It's just hot right it's now. It's a fad. Toy Story yeah. holds up over the course of time. Yeah. 
but LA Confidential definitely holds up over the course of times. One of the better nominees that year. I don't think it should have been given to Titanic. Yeah, I definitely think that no, this film is superior not. to Titanic. But um, sure. I, I, I really don't think Kim uh, Basinger Bassinger deserved the Oscar for her performance. You in know, this. I don't either because you know she's not in it that much. I don't think she's in it enough to warrant an award for it. No, uh, it should have uh, gone to Julianne Moore in Boogie Nights. I, you, in my oh, dude, oh, absolutely. Yeah, Are you yeah. kidding? Because she Look, lost to yeah. uh, Kim Basinger. Yeah, no, dude, Julianne, oh, man. There yeah, was so much no. more acting and, in that and, role. And I'm not saying that, that Kim Basinger was bad. Uh, she was There's wonderful. There's nothing there. That's, that was my she, she was, was really, She was wonderful. But yeah, th- she was, was great, but not Oscar great. Right, right. She, yeah, I, I, I agree. I definitely agree with that. But uh, she, she was and a Julianne pivotal, Moore was amazing. But she was in, a pivotal part of the film. And I do believe that the film should have won the Oscar over Titanic. Titanic. So you believe that Oscar did, in fact, blow it? I b- <laughs> hugely believe yeah, that Oscar I agree did with blow it. I think we all agree. Right? And, we're sure maybe and can, I maybe. will rate this film I, oh, four I out of four Kenzie. stars. All right. Four out of five stars. Four out of five. Out of five. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, Dr. Matlas, back to uh, back to you to tell us some more about L.A. Confidential. Um, uh, good points all around. Um, yeah, I totally agree with uh, with, with both uh, Yeah, John and, and Zeb about it being um, – like the characters being very well-defined and uh, – the the plot as complex as it is is surprisingly easy to follow and that's that's really kind of the appeal of it you know that's the key in a movie like this because it could really i think it make or break this kind of a movie yeah it, it has enough to really sink sink your teeth into and you're you're really getting your your money's worth watching this movie i mean it's like two hours 20 minutes long but I mean, there's I, just, there's so much going on, and I didn't notice the time at all. I, when I looked up at the clock and saw it was coming up on nine o'clock, I was like, "Wow, like really?" Like yeah. it, I felt it, it was an hour long. and a half long. Yeah, it didn't feel long exactly. <laughs> yeah. It did not drag or feel long at all to me while you're watching it. The yeah. time goes by really fast. See, yeah. I felt it, but it wasn't off-putting. Oh, well, good. Well, yeah. good. And that's the sign of a good movie to me. Like yeah. it's like Seven <laughs> yeah, Samurai, yeah, man. Too. That movie's four hours, feels like ninety minutes. Long, <laughs> uh, long movies. I, I just, they're not my thing. I've said that a hundred times. Mm-hmm. But this one was pretty enjoyable. Oh, good. Just like Titanic. <laughs> then fuck <God>. this <laughs> <laughs> What are you doing over there? Never He's mind. These, <laughs> these candy-ass cables that I bought are okay, fucking I was me say. off. She is be having some technical difficulties. Oh, I was going to say, dang oh, it, geez, what, what, did you, what were we just saying? Somebody just said something that was going to fucking jump on and add something about like it was good or something. Uh, we were um, talking we were about, about the, the characters or the length. The, the length, length of it, yeah. How it doesn't how, feel oh, Seven Samurai. Yeah, I was going to say, I can't wait to show Kenzie Seven Samurai. And you see haven't that. seen Seven Samurai? Oh, no. No. Maybe somebody should have picked oh. that for the hundred because that ABG because, in the movie. Because <laughs> yeah. I would have voted for it. Yeah, because I would have voted for because it because we're gonna sit down and watch a three and a half hour movie at ten p.m. Oh, everybody. That's why. That's that why we have Arabia is, lost. Isn't that yeah. why mine lost? Yeah, yeah. yeah. it was Still. unrealistic at that time. You didn't know that when you picked it. Besides, though. dude, I'm telling you, angry video game nerd, the movie would have done fucking gangbusters. God damn it! No, and it that wouldn't. will that will no, come back. Wouldn't. That will I have come no back. You fuckers. For the man. You will after his you reviews see this. are all the same. Oh, I'm reviewing this film. Oh, and the fucking shit and the fuck, fuck, fuck and the fucking fuck. Oh, look at me. I'm playing the video game. Oh, fuck and shit. That, oh, fuck. Fuck this game. That's, that's, that's how, every single fucking video that's of the angry video game nerd. You? No, but then he gets other people to say that stuff too, and then they put oh, on costumes. That's the same. Give me something different. <laughs> You got to see the movie. That's all I get. That's all Has I can say. You just make him want to pick you more. Solo? It's got a. Uh, <laughs> I feel like I'm yes. going to steal that movie pick from you. Oh. Oh. Please, that'd be great. Uh, That'd be great. But has every, like, everyone seen it, right? Yeah, yeah everybody's, everybody's, everybody's no, seen it. I have it. not. You, we never made you watch Solo? <laughs> How could we have never yeah. made you watch Solo? <laughs> you know who a Condi might not have seen it either. I never forced you I to watch this Condi. movie. No, I, I'm, I'm speechless. I so. Okay. <laughs> I think we forced Chris to watch it twice at least. <laughs> Chris loves it. <laughs> yeah. he's, down, he's, just, he's into it. In life, Chris loved it. And he can't say otherwise because he's dead. Yes. <laughs> yeah, he can't speak for himself. Can't say that for himself. All right, back to where we were. Um... Oh my god, my train of thought. Where the fuck? Well, uh, just <laughs> the length, I guess, was the last thing you were talking about too. So I guess just go on from there. Uh, Whatever your further oh, yeah, points are going to be. Yeah, I was just going to bring up like how. Uh, yeah, uh, I agree with Zeb. It was just like the perfect um, kind of counterpoint to Chinatown. Yes, uh, which is yeah, for sure uh, both great movies. So we and, were br- uh, bridging themes again here. Nice. Yeah. 
Really? So, all right. So, what are you going to rank it? Um, man, I uh, four and a half. If I could do halves, you know, if I could do halves, I would do four and a half too. For I might give I it could. a five. All this, right. this, this one might might be worth it. Okay. All right. Well, so I guess that brings it to me. Uh, and like I said, I've got a couple of. Uh, I've got a couple of uh, oh great we still got some plenty of, plenty of time because I've got some things I want to talk about with people and if anybody wants to interject obviously at any point during my well own. I just wanted to first say, mention actually before you get into that because I forgot on my part just that how much it was like La Noire the video game yeah and I don't yeah, know totally. like for any gamers out there I mean Rockstar I mean so many missions and characters and scenes from the the, the Grand Theft Auto series are based on famous like crime movies oh yeah like and uh, <laughs> I think it was a uh, um, Vice City. Yeah, right, over, with, oh, the, yeah. with the um, it has the whole Vice like Scarface. Is, Vice City is basically yes, Scarface and Goodfellas mashed up and turned into a video exactly. game. Exactly. And so yeah, and and really like I mean, they L- even have that bathroom with, yeah. the, with the chainsaw. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But this this was I mean it's funny even the titles like L.A. Confidential, L.A. L.A. Noir. Yeah. That, I mean that game is really this movie the game. I mean there's a lot of other elements too. I mean you you investigate like a like a Black Dahlia type murder and stuff. But I mean it just. It was really like that. So in some ways, it was almost familiar like that too, because like I feel like some of the interrogation scenes and stuff mm-hmm. are so oh, much like right that out game. Of the game. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, if you ever if you played that game and you see this movie, you'll see those parallels. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh yeah, I was gonna bring up just the the characters again because I think this uh, this that's one of uh, this movie's real strengths is the characters the, are all very <coughs> well defined. Yeah. Well, yeah, well defined and just I guess. Really relatable, well, understandable. Well, you're, you, you end know? up rooting you, for them. I felt like when yeah. I first saw Kevin Spacey, I was like, "Who's this asshole?" Yeah, yeah, <laughs> he, yeah. But he by the end, total... when he's in uh, old Jamie Cromwell's kitchen, you're, you're like, like, "Yeah, fuck that. Yeah. yeah." And it's yeah. like, "What the fuck?" Yeah. He shot yeah, the likable yeah. guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, right when I was starting to like, like, him. like him. Yeah. Well, it's funny. It, it's almost like an actual old movie in the sense that I feel like, in some ways, the characters' performance is like dialed up a little bit over reality you know what i'm saying they're portraying those characters almost on some level like you know you would expect them to be in a movie like the characters are like you know really yeah and that helps to make them more recognizable like you know the dan devito's character is like you know everybody's a little over the top right right it was just like a little bit like the good cop is such a good you know what i'm saying good cop is really good really good cop. like really by the book is really violent right you know the 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 crooked cops are full-on assholes you know yeah, and, and so yeah, and that that helps too. Is that like you know you they they're really defined characters that you can really get behind who they are and exactly. you know and, and and you know where they're coming from. And it's easy to understand the motivations and like when Kevin Spacey kind of turns sort of good when he decides to help out the good cop. Like yeah, mm-hmm. you get that. Like yeah, like you know moment of like triumph with that. And, yeah, you know, and then you care more when, when they get, buddy up. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, you're like yeah, yeah. It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then even too totally. when, when when him and Russell Crowe patch right, it when up. they patch it up and when they team up too and it's like you get you're these like, two oh. super cop teams that get formed like through the course of the movie. Like, you know? Yeah, and just their their interaction after they they team up. Yeah, like yeah. the the whole scene when they're investigating the the um, the, the porn ring leader's house. Mm-hmm. You know, David Strathairn's yeah. character. And um, I don't know, just kind of the interaction between the two. It's almost when like they're, when they're kind of investigating, and you know, he the one guy has to go get the car to you know go see uh, the yeah. girl, and you know the whole exchange with the keys, and it's like right there and snatch, and off they go. Right, and, yeah, and it's like you know they're working like as a well machine, like ex- yeah, stuff. yeah. And it's yeah. almost like two superheroes how like they got to fight when they first meet, but then yeah, they, yeah but then totally. they team up, you know. So when they first meet, We're up, it's like on oh, the same they got like but Jameson, you can't throw yourself <laughs> out. Oh, I'm you. And then after they get those lumps down, then there's like a mutual respect, yeah. and they team up and go forward with it. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so L.A. Confidential. A uh, couple of things that I was thinking about this movie. First of all, Kim Basinger's hair. Super glue. Anyway, <laughs> I mean, uh, there was one part where like you saw her like in profile, and because they obviously needed to make her look like Veronica Lake, who is a. Uh, an actress from old Eon, uh, from the days of yore, very beautiful actress who had a very signature look where kind of half of her face was covered by this blonde, like, wave thing. She only had one eye. It's a little note fact. Right, yeah. She was covering up yeah. Her face she all actually, the time. well, actually, and half her face was dissolved because she was a crocodile user, yeah, I guess. So she, like, so I thought she, she was just a it. Captain Planet villain. See, so, uh, <laughs> no, that came later. Okay. <laughs> that, was, that was towards the end but of her career. That character was inspired by Veronica. Like. Yeah. Uh, 
But uh, it's funny because I, I noticed like it looked really plastered like in, in this wave. You saw it from the side. Yeah. And I just thought it was funny because, uh, you know, the, the few films I've seen Veronica Lake in it, it always looks so natural. I wonder what they did different and why they had to like really cement. Well, probably the um, singer's hair. Maybe. I mean, all hair is different. Whatever Veronica Lake's hair maybe did a little more naturally, the more natural wave. Yeah. And maybe Kim Basinger's hair doesn't do that. Maybe it's some magic that went to the grave with her. Well, and so you see that, like, I've seen footage where, like, they're just, they got those cans of hairspray when they're doing the makeup, oh, and they're yeah. just going to town. Yeah. Like, they're just the CFCs that are just fucking well, just I just, the roof. I, you know, it's funny, because I, I, I pay attention to hair in films, so I like great hair. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's got to not melt under those hot lights and stuff, and they got to shoot for a while. So I assume, like, not literally super glue, but I'm sure just tons and tons like, of spray. Like Tom Hanks. Hanks's hair in the Lady Killers. How do they do that? Uh, yeah, I know. I just, like, what Hollywood like, magic? It was like Crisco employing? or something. <laughs> it just looks marvelous. Uh, so, so yeah, that was great. So, uh, yeah, this movie um, is. I, 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 this is the second time I've seen it, and I actually liked it a lot more this time. Not, not to say that I disliked it before, but I was kind of lukewarm on it. Like I could appreciate. Okay, yeah, it's it's a it's a it's a high quality film with an intricate plot uh, and good acting. Uh, but I, I was kind of emotionally disengaged from it a little bit, I think. Um, this time, I was along for the ride. And the first time I saw it was actually for a film class. It was, I was assigned to watch it. So I think maybe I was I was looking at it through like eyes that were too much looking to mine information for a class out of it instead of just letting go. Letting it, go and, and just, just being taken on this on this trip. It's like when you read a book for like a book report or something, it's not as enjoyable. It just takes just the pleasure out of it. Right, exactly. Yeah. Well, so, we were talking about, too, that like um, even though the plot is totally understandable with one viewing, it, since it is an intricate plot, you pick up more the more times you see it. Like there's going to be earlier things that maybe you wouldn't that notice. Too. There's that, so, too. So, yeah, so like that's what's cool about movies like this. Like you can watch them over and over again. Not that you need to, but just that you – the, the pieces of the puzzle come together faster and you notice more of them with the more viewings because you can pay more attention to other parts because you've, you've already been through it once. Um, but, uh, but so, yeah, so I was really um, uh, manipulated emotionally uh, far more significantly th- viewing it this time than last time. And as a result, I really, I really had a good time with it. Uh, I, I can't say this film is better than Chinatown, but I will say that I enjoyed this more than Chinatown. Hmm. Um, Okay, they're both about dark things, but Chinatown is very heavy and very sinister and very dark. Um, and, and they're both dark because they're both neo North films, but there's there's too much fucking action in this movie <laughs> for it to be... You know what I mean? There's too much... How many times in Chinatown did you go, yeah... Like almost uh, none. John Houston got the grand dog. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. I think I think Chinatown's more nihilistic. It definitely, it this, absolutely is. This has that that this has that the more of the concept of like you know some kind of like you know cosmic right and wrong where yeah. there are definable definitely. good guys and bad guys. Def- yeah, and the good no, guys that's... do win at the end, and that's the big thing. Is like you know forget it, Jake. It's Chinatown. Right. He doesn't win at the end. Nobody wins. Right. It's Chinatown. It's Chinatown, and with this, he, the good guys win. And I mean, so... they take their lumps, and it's not perfect. And obviously. There's a little shaking hands with the devil, right? But in the end, good basically triumphs prevails. over evil. Prevails yeah. exactly. So, uh, so I, I definitely, I mean, as we're talking comparisons, as we're talking, as this is a, a good companion piece to Chinatown. Uh, this this ride is more fun to go on for sure. And what also beyond the action, what helps is these just fucking like. You know, just these bravura-ridden performances by all of your leads. Your 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 three cops, Danny DeVito. Uh, I mean, like, dude, like it just it, it's almost like a comic book, or it, it, it you know, I almost feel yeah. like it is like one of the old like pulp novels well, or some and, shit. And I, so I think I think like almost they were doing for that, like not trying to write it like a movie just set during that time but write it like a movie of that time like write it uh, like write it like it would have been written right back in those days how you know you, the, the characters would have been more bombastic and over yeah. the top and, and hard drinking and two-fisted and that's maybe like if you wrote a movie this day you'd be more you know realistic with it and well, so you just, yeah, well, and yeah. so and I think they were trying to instead of yeah instead of writing it like a movie written these days with sort of more realistic character portrayals well, trying you can to credit go that, you can credit that to James Elroy because this is uh, based on a, a work of fiction of his a book 
I haven't read this book, which but was based on a true story. You say, well, same with his Black Dahlia, which is the one of his that I did read. Which actually, there's a lot of similarities, and started to make me think he's something of a one-trick pony kind of because. Uh, but what well, a trick it is! Yeah, <laughs> well, but I, this is better, I think, than Black Dahlia, it is. especially the movie. Uh, Black Dahlia, even though the book like really made a really uh, like you know s- like lame left turn for me. The movie was just awful. Wait, now is the book based on the actual event, or was it like a yes, dramatization? Both. Okay. Both. Anyways, we're not talking about Black Dolly. We're talking about fuck uh, that movie. L.A. We're Confidential. Talking about L.A. Confidential. So, so yeah, <clears throat> just great performances. Uh, a great photography. Uh, the the sets and the and the, and the uh, look. The, the lighting was beautiful. The, the costumes were fantastic. It just it really at no point was I ever really taken out of the film except for. I, I, okay. I had a couple issues. I do. I do have one major beef with this film. And what is that? I, so among the awards that it was nominated for, uh, it was nominated somehow in 1998. Interestingly huh. enough, for what award? Best sound. No oh, way. Oh, really? Did it now, win? now, we, uh, now. Okay, I, that, I, that, that, Cody that's... and I, Cody and I, were just talking about times when you know the Academy has fucking phoned something in, like this last year, 20, 2015, where they nominated Alexandra Desplat twice in the score category, which is just lazy as fuck. Yeah. You fucking assholes, pick one and give that slot to somebody to else somebody that else. fucking deserves it. Like, oh, well, his two were just so much better than that. Fuck you. Birdman got snubbed in that category. Fuck that. But the one thing, my biggest gripe about this movie was for as 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 effective as everything was, this film had arguably the worst sound I've ever fucking oh, heard oh. In, in, a, in, a, in an Oscar-nominated picture. And then oh, to find yeah. out they were nominated for that sound? Are you kidding me? There were so many fucking examples of shit ADR. Oh, and, yeah, and, I totally and, agree. And bad overdubbing and, like, Okay, and like, fully. Maybe they wanted fully. to make it more like, like a '30s film. Well, uh, even, even uh, shit, like, <laughs> even even shit, like, and, 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 and no, I don't. Okay, now I, I don't I agree. Do, there, there's totally stuff that was bringing me out of it. Yeah, like, I, like, <clears throat> yeah, just like some Foley stuff, like when he's like dialing the phone or something, and like the. It's just like way too loud, yeah. or it's just not like mixed in, and I don't know. Or the ADR isn't matched right. Yeah, I don't know if they had. They must have had audio issues on set because I, I, or or it just their ADR work was so bad. I kept noticing it, whereas usually one doesn't. The idea is you're not supposed to notice it, and every time I'm like, ah, oh, geez. I thought the sound mix was a little bit off. Yeah, too. The, I think that's the yeah, problem. Yeah, no, Let's... some of the ADR, like yeah, like uh, okay, a, a great example is uh, the first when they're in the liquor store the first time when Russell Crowe first sees Kim Basinger's character. Um, she tells the she tells the dude at the counter that they need they're gonna need a special delivery and she's telling them what they need. The camera cuts back to it's it's an over the shoulder now I think from Kim Basinger we're looking we're looking basically the 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 guy behind the counter's vantage point at Russell Crowe and you hear him say like oh that's gonna be a tall order or something like that and it's so obviously dubbed it's like fucking louder all mm-hmm. right and I was like what and then the other thing that fucking shit me about that. So and I, and as I don't do sound, this might be like nitpicking, but like, okay, we're watching you know a, a Blu-ray of, of this film, and the sound quality is good, right? So good that when he goes into the liquor store and Bing Crosby's Melakaliki Maka is playing, the bass is like. Boom. Like, <laughs> like fucking shaking my windows and shit. And I'm like, that's funny. Those speakers sound awfully fucking rad for 19, what, yeah. 49 or something? Like, what would he even have? Like now, a phonograph right, or something? Right, that's what I'm saying. Like, it would be on some little tinny fucking stereo. Yeah. And it's like, it should sound like that would have been better. That would have been better. You know what I mean? And it's like, and, and, and I'm sure most people don't notice something like that. But for me, I'm like, yeah. and I'm just like, okay, like, as if there's not bad ADR laid over it as well. And I, okay, I, I mean, well, the, the and there film. was a lot of that thing, and and you'll see this especially in old movies where like they'll have those little lines that somebody clearly doesn't say when they shoot the scene and they put it <laughs> and they in put there. it in. You can tell their mouth's yeah. not moving, right? So you see their mouth doesn't move at all, but they have a line. And a lot of movies do that. There was a like, gnarly one in Ride the Pink Horse. We were watching that the other look day. Out for yeah, that Poncho, where Poncho, you hear his voice and you see it. He's not That's talking not at all. And it's like okay, like sorry Hollywood, we're gonna notice that. Like yeah. their lips are not moving. And how um, could you like in this day and age, or at least even twenty years ago, how could and, you? And you know, I wouldn't slide? be, I wouldn't be, uh, I probably wouldn't be hammering as hard on this right now either. If it nominated. wasn't nominated, because yeah, like, are yeah. you kidding? 
Are you telling me? But it they, lost yeah, they two biffed it pretty Titanic. hard. Are you telling oh, me that? God, well. Are you telling me that that was like one of the best? Because they probably only nominated three films in no, that actually, category. No, actually, here, here were the nominations for best sound in that year. The winner was Titanic, Contact, hmm. Air Force One, Con Air, and L.A. Confidential. Oh, okay, sure, yeah. and, and so and so, what you're telling me is is that the audio sounded like that in those other four movies, and every other fucking movie that year had audio worse than that? But best sound effects editing was Titanic, which won. Of course. It's swept, Face Off or, or, and The Fifth Element. Oh, nice. Huh. Mm-hmm. Oh, some some, some uh, Besson love. Uh, so anyways, I, I'm going to stop. I'm going to get off that point now. <laughs> All right. Because there's no reason to, you know, there's no reason to run But, it, but it's true. Not, next not, not so, award-winning sound. But so anyway, so LA Confidential, yeah, I, I think that's all I really want to say about it. it. It just It's super rad. Great performances. Everything is but pretty the awesome. But the audio, four stars. Four stars. Uh, right. So, okay. So, you know, how relevant is this film? Now it's difficult for me mm, in, in the it, yeah. Well, uh, think about all this shit that's going on with all these black folk that are like getting arrested for traffic violations and dying, fly. and all these guys. And and now now there are some who believe that the media is constructing a narrative where you know police are somehow targeting black people or something like that. But uh, I, you know, and I, you know, but whether what. Whether the, the media is manipulating things by telling certain stories instead of others or whatever, I, I don't know about that. But all I know is that obviously things are happening that are raising people's concern and are kind of pitting people against one another. Uh, in this film, while on one level it is a fun sort of who's doing it, not a who done it, but a who's doing it, <laughs> and an action shoot 'em up uh, cop film. I mean, there are some issues being dealt with here subtextually. The the bloody Christmas. Yeah, with the Mexicans. With the Mexicans and then and then and, and, and also just in its desire to adhere to, or or I to, to be to seem realistic, I think. You know what I mean? Like the 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 underlying tones of like sort of institutionalized kind of racism and this sort of us versus them mentality and the sort of mentality where they protect themselves as if they're like somehow not part of the community but really an adversary uh i mean yeah, these I, are all I, sort I of issues that. these are all sort of issues that are, that are like sort of hot topics today right now yeah. no absolutely like stuff does get more coverage when well not not necessarily when it's um like a like a white victim, but I think that did kind of resonate in the movie when um, the woman that gets kidnapped right says like um, like I, I who would have cared about me like I, I like I'm I'm nobody like what I what I what I have gotten what I have gotten rescued if it wasn't like a bunch of white people that got shot right in, exactly in a they didn't care when she is a Hispanic woman was kidnapped and raped they only cared when a bunch of white people got killed right well right, exa- exactly and how and sort of like their you know their willingness to just like put to like slap a you know a crime on like a black guy well yeah that group of black guys where it was it was so clear they just decided you, you know, know and, and, and put and them it, up for it even though they didn't do it in the end it's like as long as the pieces of fit right close enough it's like well good enough you know well and, they, and then and then in, in a way the, the very job. the very event that precipitates the entire film is this sort of bloody christmas thing that happens mm-hmm. uh which was not unlike sort of what you would have today because you had a guy who would rat them out and you had a photograph because uh, cause, like that's kind of that's kind of the thing now like is this something that police are doing now or, or is this stuff things they've, they've always, always done. done they're just getting they're just it, it, right. there's just there's just more accountability now because of technology right but in this case the, like this bloody christmas that takes place in this movie mm-hmm. this is the kind of thing that you know must have happened in jails uh, you know across the country for years oh, and absolutely. years and years but that don't you know people on the outside don't really alive. find out about it. Yeah. but this one got busted so so just because the the photographer happened to be there right right and you've got a guy who's totally willing to testify and just rat everybody out because mm-hmm. everybody else is going to shut up about it but that's kind of temporarily that's not the that's not like the kind of thing that happens regular like today we see oh, that kind yeah. of thing the, all the, the time the the blue wall of silence is a, a lot thicker yeah now yeah and and i think it's kind of like progressed because I mean, you take uh, uh, another movie uh, that that's based on a true story, Serpico. 
you which know, I thought of uh, right at the beginning of this film, where where there's just like this, um, it, it's it's the it's the union, right, of, of police, right, you know, and if, if you're not on board, oh, dude, you, you're gonna you're gonna get knifed in the back. That's it. That's it. Like you know, like yeah, good luck. Yeah, they're like like what you know, what kind of career is this guy gonna have? You well, know and just I mean? like how Specs was ostracized for being the that's one. That's what I'm saying. Who and the, who in theory did the right thing, mm-hmm. but was you know totally treated like as he was some kind of piece of shit for doing it. You know exactly. And, yeah, and it's so that, that mentality that I think probably still you know would be pervasive today. The, the, yeah. that us versus them mentality of like the camaraderie and the police, where you wouldn't. Yeah. Even if a fellow cop did something wrong, completely wrong, you still wouldn't rat them out because they're a fellow cop. You know, so, something else I thought that was kind of interesting to think about that that that, that made me think about then versus now is the the Stensland cop, right? The one who is photographed, you know, beating the dude who gets fired, mm-hmm. right? So th- that's where like the similarity diverges because. Presumably, had he not been wrapped up in this other shit, he wouldn't have been murdered, and he would have been fine. He, even 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 going out the way he did as sort of as sort of the scapegoat for this piece of ugliness that caused all this public outcry. Uh, but he would have been free to live his life, you know, kind of fine. But then compared to like something like today, like take this Cecil the Hunter guy, (laughs) right? And like, you know, people will move on. But right now, like the guy can't even probably get out of his fucking front door because the hate mail is just piling up. That's what I'm saying. So like, but so things will follow you now more is what I'm saying. And it was just kind of interesting. Somebody has a quote I can't remember, but something about basically, you know, Everything that we do will now exist forever on some right. level because it will all be archived and, and recorded, and yeah. recorded and remembered, mm-hmm. and that's something. Our that, cell like, phones you know, probably recording everything while we yeah. fucking and, sit yeah, here and, and sending it to the feds. Paying as much attention as, as they are to some people, yeah. Everything that you do will be out there on some level, and that's um, something that you know. Yeah. Things, I mean, you know, just it, you, there wouldn't be that kind of record, yeah. You know, because there wouldn't be the internet to look things up. Right. So, you I mean, do you think how, 10, different, 20 do you, years later, how different do you think that would be today? Like that bloody Christmas incident. If they had that shit, I mean, they'd hang those fucking cops out oh, there. Yeah. Like all it, those cops it, would be no in jail. There's no way there'd be one scapegoat. The, there's no way it'd be like the dude would just right. like retire that, and go that away. Chief, that chief would have had to resign, probably. Yeah. He would have resigned over the, the shame of it. Like all those cops who were involved in that thing would have to, like, you know. Not only get, be fired, but brought up on charges. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And it would be. Because they would have to. The, the ACLU and everybody would be would be howling for their. You know, the, there'd for be their, riots their in the streets. There'd be, you know, demonstrations. Well, yeah. we would hope so. Yeah. Well, they, well, well then because there would yeah, be, because that would be an it just, it just it just seems like a lot of them when they when they do something like that now they just get paid vacations. Uh, well, the, well, that's, that's, the, well, that's, that's the, the end way. result. You know what I'm saying? They get that's the end result of the charges they're uh, brought up yes. on. I mean, and it's funny because just like talking about things dying down. By the time usually the sentence comes through. The media's moved, moved on, on. so yeah. most people have moved the on. Is, the outcry is kind of done. Muted. And, Nobody and gives a shit about Trayvon Martin anymore. Yeah, that's right, it. Right. That's it. Because they moved on to whatever else is. Once the media stops hammering it in now your head, uh, you San, stop caring. Uh, San, Sandra Bland or whatever Yeah, is, that's yeah. the one. Yeah, yeah, that's and, the... And so, yeah, that's and then that's usually how it works. They don't get, Although, they get a slap on the wrist, but by then nobody cares anymore anyway. You know, that that is another thing that I like about this film, kind of the way it sort of examines, like, the nature of justice. Because, like, you know, Jamie Cromwell asked Guy Pierce, you know, would you be willing to place corroborating evidence on a suspect you knew to be guilty? And he's like, no. But you know, and he even, he even invokes it later, you know Russell Crowe would. And, like, that's kind of like the weird kind of, like, it's justice, right? But, like, is it exactly? Like, well, we have the rules written a certain way. There's always, I think, a divergence between law and justice. Because, yeah, because like, the, there's sort of, there's, there's, I guess there's a, there's a presumed justness well, or morality to laws. Right, right. And, like, and like and, and the sort of idea that, like a, a, like, a wrong can make a right. Right. Like, when they do bend and break the rules, you know, to, to, but in the end... And right. Like, to play, like, placing corroborating right. on, a, on a suspect you know to be, be guilty. To, who's guilty. Like, you saw him commit the crime, but you know he's going to get away on some te- technicality. So, like, you do the right thing, which is really the wrong thing. Right. But then it sort of is the right thing. And I don't know, like, it's 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 weird how there is that, that dividing line. And, it's, and it is more the law which is served in this country than justice. 
Uh, well, for sure. Well, and, and I guess that kind of has to be because, it'll, I mean, you know, uh, you, you what a law is 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 objective. Right. What justice is is subjective. many times sub, mo- well, it, always. There's subjective. a streak of morality to justice, and that's so personal, right? That you can't define that. Exactly. But law can but, be but defined. Law, exactly, which is why you have to err on the side of law, right. really not. Right. And, just, and, and, just, and and then so in theory, though, it's the you cops. just hope they're all just. When if they're working within their own sense of justice. Yeah. And then, the, then the justice and law are working hand in hand, and hopefully in a good way, but obviously maybe not always in a good way. It's funny because there's such a visceralness, <laughs> a viscerality. <laughs> uh, Russell Crowe's performance, you're like, Ugh, like he's just like like exploding chairs in his hand, like he's fucking gambit, <laughs> and like punching dudes through fucking walls. You know what I mean? And just like, he ah! was like, he was like the Hulk when yeah. he went, like when I was fucking turn green and bust out of his pants. <laughs> yeah, when he no, went exactly. Chair, you know, it, it, it's, it's funny because, because I would catch myself getting swept up being like, uh, right. And then I'd be like, Oh, oh but wait, like that's not legal. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, like, you can't do that. And I kept going back and forth. You know what I mean? And it's like, uh, I think that's kind of one of the the, the, the fun things about a, a film like this set in the past like that because I think it kind of maybe invites you to kind of put that shit aside for now because you're not dealing like I mean you you just you, having the knowledge that things were kind of done differently back then yeah and you can kind of get away with well some and, of that. and I think the film is effective on both levels because like if you want to watch it like that then it definitely has tons of fodder for discussion as we've proven. But then I think with all the action and stuff, like it also, I think, invites you to be like, don't, you know. It's not, it's not really like that. Yeah, That's or, just or, the or, or just to kind Hollywood of, hogwash. You, you, know, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Well, I guess to, to decide for yourself who's kind of the good guys and the bad guys sure. in environment. And maybe for some people, like, they're conflicted by the end of it or something. Because... Well, it's funny how people sort of seem to tread the line. Like, okay, like, even, like, Russell Crowe, like, his, his relationship with Kim Basinger, like, yeah, I mean, he, she's not, he's not paying her. But, I mean, he knows she's a prostitute. Like, technically, he, he would arrest people right, for, for doing, doing what he thing. does, sort of. And then also, he doesn't bust her. Even though he would bust other women for the same yeah, thing. He fucking busts her right in the fucking well, <laughs> face. That's what he does. So, I mean, yeah. So, and, and, and like, and where do you draw the line? Like, the yeah. thing, you know, with the whole, um, you know, the bloody Christmas, like, Russell Krogs in there break it up at first. Yeah. But then when the one dude's saying, you know, chinga to Madre to him. It's like, oh, then no, all you of a sudden, didn't. Then he's beating the guy's ass. And then yeah. Kevin Spacey's just there for yucks, but then the guy gets blood on his tie. <laughs> yeah. he's beating the guy up. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, you know, the, yeah. the, I mean, there are varying degrees yeah, of yeah. even for these characters and like how you were saying with you know how specs like i mean he is very political oh, oh and you yeah could, and you could claim that it is sort of fucked up no what he does, exactly but it's, then it's it is, funny but then what he's doing is morally right because he posits like, himself as kind of like oh no i'm the upstanding guy who right. follows the law but it's like oh but i'm not above like using this to position to complete myself. advantage right like you oh, know. like you know several times he takes full advantage shrewd of Shrewd. But that helps too. That's to say that the characters are much more. You know, there's a lot of depth to them. They're not caricatures or one dimensional. Even though they're sort of over the top. Uh, they're still. Yeah, I, they have. A, they yeah, have depth. Yeah, I was gonna say Russell. Russell Crowe is kind of one dimensional until like right at the end when he fucking is like, okay, I'll stop being stupid. Well, but no, but think about it, like <laughs> even okay because he's against violence to women so much that he has to punch him in the face well, himself. Right, but that there is something to that. <laughs> he did like it you know out what of I'm love. saying? He did it out of love. That's right. That's right. Because you can rape out of love too. I guess. Yeah. Spying, rape, mm. spying out of love. It was so That's much. A, it was so much more significant him, you know, slapping her around than anybody else in that movie because of his earlier morals. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, so a lot to uh, a lot to digest. With this film, it was, uh, but you know, in a way, almost kind of, uh, almost kind of reassuring that, because as we watch these like older films that bring up sort of issues that like are are relevant today, they were obviously relevant when the film was made as well. That's why they're issues that are like discussed in the film. Mm. So like in a way, it's almost reassuring to know that while it seems like the end of the world, like right now, like this is the same shit people have been dealing with yeah. like forever. Oh, absolutely. People yeah. always and worry then, about and, uh, stuff. I mean, this this movie was nineteen ninety seven. What, what was it? Ninety two, I think. That the L A riots, LA riots were ninety two. Yeah. 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 So, 
Yeah. So five I, years I after see. that and 20 years before today, you know, sure. still relevant, you know, at any time. Right. Well, yeah, exactly, exactly. And, uh, you know, a film made in 97 being even relevant to the times, it's reflecting. Even, I mean, well, even originally you know. the Keystone Cops was about corruption in the police force. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was uh, it was pretty hard hitting satire. Yeah, no, it was. Yeah, they really weren't. Yeah, they uh, were really. They really had a message. They were kicking around with that stuff. They, they knew. Then, they but... they knew what kind of power cinema had as a medium to influence and, and, and educate and make people aware. Uh, and they're like the best. The best way to make them swallow that pill is comedy. Is slapstick. Yeah, what, exactly. Uh, what the fuck? Don't break my tablet. All right. Well, <laughs> that's gonna be that's gonna be it. But Zeb's in the shitter. Uh, some, we'll just pretend. I'll like, I'll, so. I'll take both yeah. spots. You can be okay. you can be Zeb. <laughs> you can be Zeb for the goodbyes. Okay. All right. So next week, uh, barring <coughs> some sort of uh, weird thing, is gonna be the final week if you blew it, Oscar. Uh, so we'll be uh, wrapping it up, and then we'll be doing a free for all round. No, it's been uh, a while since we had that. As our Don't know what attendance pick. continues to dwindle. Oh, we need some. We need some new blood. Up in here. Some, this yeah. Is, uh, no. Out. So, although the, I guess the only advantage is that like we'll go through themes and shit quicker. We have well, this dude. This has been luxurious. This how much time we've had on the podcast? Went by yeah. crazy fast. Yeah. 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 yeah it did the double yeah. features help too? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Oh. My bad. What did we miss? Oh. <laughs> What did I miss? <laughs> <laughs> We're just oh, about yeah, to... L.A. Confidential, good movie. Cool. Uh, <laughs> How many stars did you give us? Uh, four out of five. Uh, <laughs> love it. Go see it. Um. <laughs> Yeah. All right, so yeah, we're just about to say goodbye. So uh, we'll be back next week with our I'm Zen- our, oh, our, our, <laughs> our, our what theoretically, presumably, should be our final film. You, you should have just yelled your name from the cam. Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm so... Yeah. Yeah, turn into an Adam Sandler skit in there. <laughs> uh, yikes. Uh, okay, uh, so uh, <laughs> let's uh, reintroduce starting to the left we clockwise. We have a goodbye song. We we'll have that song. soon. I need, oh, yeah, to, I need got... to get the fucking I mean, mixer. like a song that we all sing at the end. That <laughs> no. Oh, you can do that. Are you not, that is not how a theme so song good. works. What? Last like, week, love. Like sound of music. Music. You, you write it. Till next week. Really? You, the theater you is closed. It. <laughs> all right. I'm Zeb. I mean, John. <laughs> <laughs> sing us out, Kenzie. I'm Kenzie. I'm Condi. With music. <laughs> With feeling. I'm Zeb. I'm Matt. And I'm Ed. And this is uh, Las Peliculas, Sabados Gigantes at the Cinema Marijuana Theater. And we'll be back next week with more shenanigans. With another exciting episode. Yes. Adios. Tune in. Tune in.